Hey guys, uh, so this was the progress I made with the Slicer support. Um, so to start off with the default support settings that I had from Solidoodle, uh, created this object, which isn't that spectacular. Um, you can see I just kind of stopped trying to pull off the support at one point because it was just fused on there so tightly that uh, trying to get it off was kind of frivolous. Um, I mean, like, when you're at the point where you're just kind of cutting it with the X-Acto knife to, to make it look like you want it to look like, it's not, it defeats the purpose of using support. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was just, it was fused on there, and uh, even now, like, the parts I did cut off still have, like, a the bumpy texture of the, like, where you can see where the individual wraps were. Um, so the first thing I tried to do was incorporate the new interface layers that I saw on the Slicer software, and so this was the second attempt that came from that. Um, so the interface layers, the support raft is a, uh, it, let me see if I can get you closer. So support raft is like the zigzagging that you can see right here. Um, and then the interface layer goes in between the zigzagging and the actual object to, to uh, create like a flat surface that it can print onto. Um, so it like reduces overhangs and drooping and all the sort or not overhangs, but like the drooping that comes from overhangs, I'm sorry. Um, so that's the that's what the interface layers do, and so I I noticed that it it was still too tightly on there. So I mean it was fused to the object still, but um, I noticed that if I loosen the gap, I guess I would say between the object and the interface layer, that it would be uh, it would like be easier to print onto as a support. So that came to the third attempt, and the third attempt was a. Uh, I actually inc increased the gap between the interface layer and it peeled off entirely, uh, which was I was really impressed actually. I wasn't expecting it to be this successful with Slicer. So this was like the entire support that was on. Um, I peeled off the, I mean like I cut off the, the rafting on the bottom, but I mean like it, it, you know, it was, I just peeled it off like that. Um, and then you can see on the actual object there's no real drooping. Um, came out pretty well. So. I was really impressed with that. I may actually use Slicer a little bit more. There's a little bit of bumps here and there, but I mean, it's not like to the point where I can actually see the uh, infill or anything like that. So overall, I was really impressed. And then I kind of, for the last attempt, I tried playing, uh, making it a little bit tighter. And you can see that like the tighter fit left a little bit more marks. So this is a tighter fit, and you can see there's a little bit more white on it from where uh, the interface layer was attached. I didn't have to cut it off. Um, I, was still, I was still able to peel it off, but I mean, the... It just it left a little bit of marks on it, but I mean if you're acetone washing this kind of stuff, I don't think it really matters, or if you're painting over it. Um, so yeah, the interface layer is really impressive. Let me show you what I did. Uh, here's my settings right now. I just have the three on the interface layer, and then the overhang threshold I just made at 70. Um, so what you want to do is you want to go to advanced in your settings, and this is the setting you want to change. By default, it was at 0.25, and the problem with that is that the extruder can't print that small, so what happens is that when it tries to print, it um, it closes the gap because it thinks that it's printing smaller than it actually is, if that makes sense. So you're kind of tricking the software into closing the gap. So if you want to have a really tight fit between the interface layer or something else, you can change this to like 0.35 or 0.3. Um, well, 0.4 is like a, it, uh, it's a looser fit, I guess I would say, and then you can make it bigger like 0.46 to uh, make it like even more looser so that it would peel off easier. But then you run the risk of having you know, the drooping on the overhangs. Um, so those were those settings. And uh, so I was pretty, those were the main things that I was messing with. Um, I was able to do pretty well with that. But the default setting of 0.25 was just really bad. And I would suggest changing that just automatically. Um, I think it was intended to sort of mimic the um, flow ratio that Skyforge has. But I don't know if that was intentional or not. Either way, I don't think uh, I don't think it worked that well. And so I printed a lot of balls, trying to get the uh, other part to work. Um, so most of these are kind of the same. I couldn't really make that much progress on it. The main problem I was having is that the first two layers were sticking way too way too tightly. As I would, I mean, that's kind of what I figured would happen though, because it needs somewhere to anchor onto to actually print. But I mean, so like the first two layers, I just kind of had to like start cutting off with an exacto knife on pretty much all of them. Um, Everything, I mean, there was only one print I think I was actually able to, to peel it off. Um, if I can find it. I think it was this one. And so, you can't really see it that well. Um, I mean, yeah, just kind of, like, even the part that I peeled off, it still has, like, a little bit of just melted plastic just because there was so much going on there. Um, 
It doesn't look like a sphere, but that's not related to the support. That is related to me improperly using the printed heating bed. So like this was, this is kind of how like, it looks kind of oblong on this one, but when I was adjusting it better, it looks more like a ball now. Um, still had a little bit of features, but the problem was I was running it too hot, so it was warping the bottom of the print, and then it was able to cool off when it gets higher up. But, um, I mean, overall, the only problem with this is that if you have an overhang that actually comes down, so it needs to print a completely new layer without attached to anything, uh, it's still difficult to it, it detach that from um, the interface layer, which is a problem, but um, we'll see. I mean, I'll try using this like on actual... Um, prints that incorporate that and see how hard it is because I'm not sure if it'll be easier if it has something else it attaches to. And the other thing too is that while I was watching this print I could see the um, the the rafting, I could see it like swaying side to side uh, as it was getting printed onto. So I feel like even if you were able to print this where it wasn't attached to the interface layer that it would still um, it would still kind of like slide around and fall off or something like that. Like it pushed off the same way that um, uh, a first layer that doesn't stick gets pushed off. I feel like it'll mimic that. So those are the considerations I'm taking into account, but that's the progress I've made with Slicer so far. So I would recommend using the interface layers of three and changing the support material extrusion width um, to whatever setting you want to kind of incorporate that as like a, a gap size. So that's it for right now. If you guys find any better settings, um, I will upload the STL file and you can play around with it. Uh, I am more than welcome to use your settings and see what you guys did better than me. Uh, I have no doubt in my mind that some of you are much better at this than I am. But that's it for now, so see you guys later.